following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the August 18th, 19th, the uh, terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm going to kind of cut with the normal uh, opening here. I'm, I'm right at the precipice in my throat where it's like it could just uh, give way and I could start just hacking away and coughing. I don't want to do that. So we're just going to try to keep it nice and calm for the uh, moment. But it doesn't change the uh, show or anything. Um, I absolutely would love to hear from you. You can do that by gifts called 866 Oh, man, you know, you, you kind of go through, you kind of mess up your opening, and I've even forgotten the number off the top of my head. But you know the number. You hear it all the time, 877-927-6648. Uh, uh, you can always send me an email. Uh, do Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Send it early. There are a couple questions that came in yesterday, one from Purdy, one from Dennis that we didn't get to. We'll go ahead and get to those here uh, this afternoon. But send those things in early, and if you could put radio show question in the uh, subject heading, that'd be great. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, uh, you can go ahead and send me any private or public uh, message out there. So let's go ahead and begin the show. We've got a mixed bag out here. Let's take a look at what's going on. We've got the uh, Dow trading down about 58 points right now. The S&P is up 7. NASDAQ 100 up 100. Russell's down 19. Semis are up 29. So plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin by looking at the equity markets. And let's begin by taking a look at some of the things that we know. One of the things that you and I know, we talked about this yesterday, we talked about this kind of ad nauseum, and that is when we get that spot volatility index one day rate of change and the uh, phenomena associated with it, which is a uh, bounce or a bottom pattern. And that's exactly what has taken place thus far. It's uh, both a bounce and a uh, bottom out there, but it's a bottom of significance. That's really the question. So we knew yesterday when we had a one day rate change, rate of change, I think it was 24%, 20.44% was the uh, number all we're looking for is something above plus 10 percent so the s p 500 had that going for it this morning uh the second thing that in essence the markets had going for it this morning was the uh sub sub substantial oversold condition inside the new york stock exchange which and here's where it's kind of interesting we've had a, a decent rally i haven't looked at the new york stock exchange to see where it's at uh, it's lower, actually. I can look at my screen right here uh, up on top. And uh, the advanced decline oscillator reading has, has gotten even worse. It's now down in the minus 216 area. And uh, it's, it's not doesn't spend its time below minus 150 very often. It certainly doesn't uh, spend much time in the minus 200 uh, area out here. And so, <clears throat> and I'm just seeing this now. Uh, so I had sent out a update, uh, uh, just a market update for subscribers about an hour ago, less than an hour ago. I mean, I think that it was. And uh, folks, I hadn't looked at this New York Stock Exchange to realize you can't just, it, it, you just can't keep pounding it down like this. And this extreme over, so, yeah, I can't get a little bit lower, get down to minus 250. It can get down to minus 400 or so, but it's not likely. So this is making me say, hmm, something to think about. Yeah, it's bearish, but it's oversold. And we usually get a bouncer bottom. Uh, in this uh, area, in this range out here. So that is certainly something to uh, think about. Nonetheless, let's go take a look at what's transpired. So we talked about yesterday, those one-day rates of change, and how do you know when the market has identified a bottom? And what we did was, well, let me change screens here. And the way that we do that is through pattern recognition. So we know that on a larger picture, a daily basis, we got that uh, signal that said, hey, one day rate of change about plus 10 percent uh, anticipate expect some type of bounce or bottom well what transpired and you like to see all four equity futures contracts come together at the same time with some patterns and that didn't really occur until about 5 5 30 this morning there was there was a, an indication last night of a uh, potential bottom that was being formed but the, that ended up giving way not each of the futures contracts generated bottoms here that's not the case you can see for example, yep, uh, you can't see it. Shoot, you're on the wrong page. I'm on the daily. Give me a moment here. Sorry. 
you can see the daily. I'm t and you guys are maybe thinking I'm talking about something. And let's try this. Is that it? There we go. Okay, now we're at the 30-minute time frames for each of the four equity future contracts. So remember, again, we get that daily signal, and we say, okay, when we have a daily signal, let's go then take a look at intraday charts. Typically, I look for the 30-minute time frame chart for some type of signals that the market is getting ready because the market communicates to us. Here, if you take a look at the ES Mini upper left-hand panel, this completes a, a TD9 count pattern at 5.30 this morning, and then at 6, it confirms Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And then price just travels sideways for about an hour and a half, two hours or so. 8.30 takes off to the upside and might be forming a TD9 count, although we do not have a valid TD9 count as we speak right now at 1.11 in the afternoon. In order for that to happen, we're going to need to see price spike above 44.14.75 between now and 2 p.m. Without that, you would not have a TD9 count bottom. Okay, in the NQ, at the same time that the ES was forming a TD9 count and a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, so too was the NQ, so too was the Dow equity future contract, so too was the Russell 2000. So I, I haven't been, it wasn't in uh, Larry's uh, uh, workshop. I think it's going on. I know they do some live trading. I, I've got to believe that they uh, took a long position, at least an intraday long position. They were seeing maybe something similar out here. Now, of course, they're not using these tools. They're not using TD9 and Rhodes momentum indicator signals here. But this is how you put it all together. This is how a market puts it all together and communicates to us what its intentions are. Granted, the market can do anything that it wants. But when you get this and we know about the one-day rate of change, it's really just all right here. Now, the other benefit that obviously I have in these charts is I've got those TAS market profiles. And those are very helpful to us because it helps us to understand if there's any key levels of support or resistance where the battles are going to take place. Ideally, when you get those bottom patterns, you've got market profiles where price is holding support. And in fact, that's exactly what you saw go on this morning. So now the question is, oh, hey, okay, great. That, that's great, Steve-O. You're telling us about the past. Now tell us about the present or the future. Well, with regard to the present, there are potential TD9 count patterns that are in the making. But right now, it's bar 7 in the ES, bar 7 in the NQ, bar 3 in the YM, and the Russell doesn't have any kind of a, a topping signal. So... What we don't have, you, you needed me to say it was either bars 8, 9, or maybe the bar following 9 that had made the high of this pattern, of this TD9 count pattern. And without that, I, I would be hesitating on calling the market top. It may just, this, this could be the counter trend rally, but my preference, my preference, my personal preference is to see some type of confirmed topping pattern, very much like looking for some type of confirmed bottoming pattern here on the 30-minute time frame chart. So I'm, I'm screaming that out as loud as I can to everybody that's listening, whoever that might be, that the, you would only get a TD9 count if price is able to take out the current day's high inside the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow and do it between now 114 and 2 p.m. If that doesn't happen, then we don't really have a topping signal to sell. You'd have to have some other reason to sell. Um, I could make one up uh, inside the NQ. That reason would be because price had gotten back to a prior level uh, where price began to turn down yesterday. That would be about the only signal I could come up with inside the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be back in just a few. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Now down 54, S&P's up 7, NASDAQ's up 98. Let's go out to Philadelphia and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Steve, I'm doing very well. Uh, I uh, wanted to make uh, your conversation brief so as to uh, save your voice, but um, you, at the top of the show, spoke of the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index. Yes. I wanted to ask you further about that with a very uh, specific questions. First, it all hinges upon my choice of using either the uh, S&P futures versus the NASDAQ futures to trade when I'm using index futures. Mm -hmm. And what I've found over uh, the years, Steve, is that, of course, the S&P uh, is about half NASDAQ stocks about half uh, New York Stock Exchange stocks by market value. And what I found is when the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange indices are moving roughly similarly, I'll use the uh, S&P futures. That, that'd be my default. Okay. When they're behaving dramatically differently, NYSE to NASDAQ, I'll default to using the NASDAQ futures, shorting for a decline, buying for an advance. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I uh, don't, uh, so I'm not penalized by uh, uh, difference in performance of the NYSE names. Anyway, so. So would today be one of those days that's a kind of an NQ day uh, for you then? Because yeah, of I've a been shorting, uh, let's put it, let's be very clear, since the August 5th high in the NASDAQ uh, 100 and its futures. Mm -hmm. I've been almost exclusively trading the NASDAQ futures on the short side. Mm -hmm. um, what I observe here, of course, is the NASDAQ has bounced stronger today. Mm -hmm. The NASDAQ topped August 5th, and so its pullback is m more well advanced, if you will, than the NYSE. Now, the, the uh, NYC Composite topped just Friday the 6th, excuse me, Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. and uh, we've pulled down hard here. Um, so my question to you is, 
I listened to what you said about the very short term being oversold. Yes. But can you share with us if, in fact, the NYSE is topped August 13th, last Friday, can you share with us what levels, if broken, uh, confirm a uh, intermediate term decline phase just getting underway, please? That's, that's what I'm looking for help on, please. Sure. Okay, great. So, and, and thank you for all that and sharing that with the uh, listeners out here. What's on the screen right now is the New York Stock Exchange, both in the black screen and then in the white screen is the New York Stock Exchange. And John is referring to my initial comments this morning here about there this afternoon about the advanced decline oscillator. That is the second panel. Uh, that is this blue line, the blue line right now that measures minus 216.58. So the answer to your question, John, is 16,321.94, to be exact. Right now, price is trading at 16,435.54. Now, I'll expand this chart out. That is the TD9 breakout level. And if this is still a bullish market, then price should hold that area. Now, because we were looking at how the advanced decline oscillator has moving lower, and is getting down towards the minus 250 into the minus uh, into the very extreme oversold level. My instinct is that what we will see the New York Stock Exchange do is move all the way down to that 16,321.94, reject that level, and then we will get some type of counter trend move, some type of bounce. It could be more than that, but right now I would be calling it more of a counter trend rally. And based on the behavior of the advanced decline, knowing where the breakout level is, that would seem to be the logical outcome. The illogical outcome is that it just simply rejects that it doesn't really care that it's so oversold. There's something else going on inside the market. It's just some type of liquidation event. And that would say, okay, once we get a close below 16,321, expect uh, to see more downside action. Now, does it take out the, the swing points? Um, let me see where swing point this is. This is from July, July 20th. I don't know. It could be, John, that all that's really going on inside the New York Stock Exchange or many of these markets, uh, because price did trade above July inside the New York Stock, the July high. And so now the question is maybe it's just simply going to trade above the July high and just slightly below the July low. So the eventual outcome could be below that breakout level, and it could just be that swing point from uh, July that gets us down into the 15,954 level. Do, does that information answer your questions, or what additional information should we discuss? Uh, it does. Thank you on that. Uh, the added uh, item I might ask for is your weekly chart, and if there are any TD9 count breakout levels that come into play uh, just underneath. Sure. So uh, let's do that. I'm going to switch this from daily to weekly. Folks, the oscillator and change line is going to stay as a daily, so don't pay attention to that. And the answer to your question is 15,752.24. That would be <laughs> the... Uh, you like that? Yeah, I do. Uh, well, hey, you, you, if you ask a question, I'm going to give you if, an answer if it exists on the screen. Uh, but that is, John, that is the breakout uh, level, and, um, and and I would say that that would be a very likely price target. Now, on a weekly basis, about five weeks ago, it did generate a hammer candle down towards that area. It got yep. down to 15,954. That's that July low. So that really kind of the, the thinking is that uh, it's possible that August is just simply going to be an outside bar. Um, meaning from a monthly standpoint, it takes out the high, it takes out the low, and then it gets ready to take off. So I'd say that 15,752.24 level would be the area to really be watching. Excellent. Um, that uh, answers my questions about as specifically as I could ask for. Perfect. So um, we will go forward. Uh, what I'll just say, if... Uh, from a trader's perspective, if yep. the NASDAQ starts to outperform for more than just today, the NYSE, I'll be using the uh, S&P futures uh, as my default, side. so uh, right. for what that's yeah. worth. You know, John, I think with regard to the NQ, and I've got the, uh, I've got the daily, weekly, monthly, and, and the quarterly timeframes here, 
The the level to be watching inside the NQ today, I believe, is the 14,919 level, which is the bottom of its daily profile. So we've seen the counter trend rally, or we've seen a rally. That was to be expected because the spot volatility is one day rate of change yesterday. That work, to a certain extent, has been done to the upside. If the NQ closes back below the 14,919 level, which would be day number two below the bottom of that profile, that's really the signal of a further move back. And the one level you didn't ask me for that's now on my screen that I would provide to you is 14,585. And that is the bottom of the weekly profile for the NQ. If price closes below that, uh, then we could see the markets moving lower for an extended period of time. Thanks John, a bunch. You bet. Thanks for calling. Always good to hear from you. That was John in Philly. We'd love to hear from you too as well, folks. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So a couple questions that had come in yesterday afternoon that we didn't get a chance to get to. Uh, one coming in from uh, Purdy. And pretty want to take a look at Robinhood, H O O D being the uh, ticker symbol out here. And I don't know, I don't recall what uh, Pretty was looking for, but uh, we'll just simply take a look at the charts. Now, first, Robinhood has not been trading long enough to generate any kind of TAS market profile. So they're not going to help us. And that makes it a little bit difficult, uh, Purdy, to, to truly navigate the chart and try to, you know, I'm assuming you're looking for an entry point. I believe that was the question out here. So right now, and just looking at the daily chart, the only thing that I can share with you, or one thing that I can share with you, 
is uh, this certainly had wide price spread and accelerated volume back on the day of August 4th. Prices pulled back into that area. Um, you know, an ideal entry would probably be at the uh, bottom swing point from back on July 30th. Uh, and that would be somewhere between 33 and a quarter and 36.98. In other words, I don't have anything compelling right now on any of these charts to say that now would be the time. If we look at the white background chart, we're also hampered with limited data. The data that I do have shows that today is wave number four, or letter D. If we had Basil on the air right now, we could ask him his opinion on this because this would be part of the Chapman wave where typically he says something after wave number four, letter D, something else is uh, maybe going to happen or likely to happen. I don't remember the exact words uh, that Basil uses. But the fourth level, or D, hasn't been confirmed just yet. That only gets confirmed pretty with a higher low. So that earliest would be tomorrow. But that could be signaling some kind of uh, potential bottom. Uh, weekly chart, we don't have anything. Intraday, we really don't have anything. Uh, so I don't have much to really assist you with it, Robinhood. And I'd have to just say it like this. Robinhood has traded so a few days worth of data. It's really not a great chart from a technical pattern standpoint, or at least not the technical patterns that I use. So wish I had more for you, but I can't make it up. And, uh, and we won't. So I uh, hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for waiting an extra day. And then there's ticker symbol G. And G is Genpak Limited. And this is for Dennis. And uh, Dennis, my apology, again, I don't recall what you were looking for, but let's just tell you what the stock charts are communicating to us. And that's really that price right now has formed a brand new daily profile and price is trading within inside it. The support level would be between 5047 and 5069. So if you were looking for an entry point, it's between 5047 and 5069, or at least that's what we would say at this stage here. We'll pull over our white background charts for G. Our question is, was there any kind of significant top that had formed? And now that we take a look at it, we see the answer is yes. It was bar number eight. Oh, yeah, it was actually bar number, the bar following bar number nine that also identified the uh, TD9 count top. That was yesterday. And so very likely price is going to pull back to that support level. It's possible, uh, Dennis, that where it's really going to pull back to is its breakout level of 49.50. But it's a bullish structure. So as price is moving down towards 5047, the question that you need to answer is on a 30-minute basis, is there some kind of pattern that's going on? And if there is a pattern, a pattern like a TD9 count, a road momentum indicator bottom, maybe an A to B equals CD, maybe wave number seven, those would be four very uh, solid potential bottoming type signals. Then you'd have your message to go ahead and fire away. If as price is pulling back into that support level on a daily basis and there is no bottom signal on an intraday chart, say a 30 minute, a 65 minute, a 15 minute, then I'd say be patient and wait and try to do that exact same scenario again, but do it as price is approaching the 4950 level, which is its TD9 breakout level. Now, on a weekly basis, this does not have a topping pattern. So on any pullback here, and to kind of put this together with the daily, the number is 49.87. Well, it, it turns out that 50.47 is the bottom of that profile. 49.50 happens to be that uh, TD9 breakout level, and you got 49.87. So that is your real range out there. So we know the range. Now all you have to do is just focus in on the short-term time frame charts to look for that bottoming signal that takes you into a long position inside of G, if in fact that's what you were looking for. So thanks so much for waiting. Sorry that we couldn't get to it yesterday, just the way these ISPs typically uh, work. And if you if you wait, uh, it doesn't matter how long sometimes you wait. It's just you've got to get those messages fired off early, and that way I will do everything I can to get to it. The next question here coming in from Nancy. Fancy Nancy. And Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. We look at Apple today, please. Uh, you entered the September 17th, 145 calls yesterday when the stock was at 148. So let's take a look at Apple, try to understand for you where support and resistance is at and whatever patterns might be in play. So as we take a look at Apple, it's sitting right here at resistance, which was the bottom of its daily profile, 144.93. As long as this can hold, Nancy, then price may and should, quite frankly, go target the top of that profile, which is 149.01. Yesterday, today, price has pulled back to test the center of its bear structured weekly profile. And so what you don't want to see is a close below 144.93. If you do see that, granted, typically you need two days, 
But heck, if you get one day's close below that, then that could be signaling to you that what Apple's really going to do is go target 138.53. But right now, so far, what Apple has done is it has held. It has held a key level of support. That's the bottom of its bullish structured profile. The monthly time frame does not have any kind of a topping signal. Yeah, it's made a 1 to 2A to B equals CD. That does not mean that it can't go make the 2.618 expansion. The confirmation of that would be a close above 150 even Steven. We pull over Apple's white background charts, again here looking for any other kind of signals, because really what Nancy's looking for isn't what Nancy's really asking, knowing that price on the daily basis in Apple is back at that key level of support. Isn't Nancy really asking, hey, what's going on in the 30-minute time frame? Is there some kind of bottom pattern there that says, you know, being in this call position makes a heck of a lot of sense? Unfortunately, um, I don't have that signal. I'd love to have that signal for you, Nancy, but I don't have that signal for you. I can't even give you an A to B equals CD pattern. I could draw it in here, but we don't have a bullish reversal candle. And so short of that, I, can't, I, I cannot call that a bottom. So unfortunately, we're not getting the complimentary... 30-minute, uh, hey, I've just formed a bottom, kind of like we did on the 30-minute uh, charts for the equity futures contract. So it doesn't mean that Apple can't trade higher. On a pullback here, on a 30-minute basis, Nancy, what you don't want to see is price close below 146.18. So forget about the fact that it didn't form one of Stevie's bottoms. It still is a bottom, as we'll call it. And price is inside uh, or closed above a bearish structured profile. If the breakout is real, any kind of retracements or pullback will find support typically either at the top or at the center. My experience is more oftentimes than not, it's the center, 146.18, and that's why I gave you that number. If price closed below that, I would want to be uh, in a, a long call position inside of Apple because you're not getting any kind of confirmation on that short-term time frame. But I could see why you would hold it, though, because price hadn't taken out 144.93, the bottom of that daily profile. So hope that helps you out, Nancy, with regard to Apple, and uh, best of luck to you with that trade. No other questions yet, but we're about to go to a, a breakout here. So let's take a quick peek at what's going on just generally across the uh, markets out here. The Dow down 117, the S&P getting back to flat, the NASDAQ's up 85. Uh, we probably should go take a look at Goldilocks. It's off $2. Silver's down $0.22. Cents. So uh, let's do that when we get back from this break, unless I get another request in the meantime. Steve Rhodes with TNN. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Before I came on the air, I was flipping through the channels. I forgot today was Thursday, and uh, which is typically means the uh, the channel is on the uh, golf uh, station, the golf channel. And and I forgot that the women were playing their their British Open up, up at Carnoustie, which is what an amazing golf course uh, that is. Uh, you know, th those of you that are golfers, isn't isn't Carnoustie where John Van Velt had that uh, extraordinary meltdown? And it was on hole 18, right? It was on hole 18 which has the uh, little river, the water uh, running through that, that entire hole. I think he made like a 9, a 10, or an 11 or something like that. Remember, they, that went for, it, was a, like, it was a terrible hole to watch as a golfer. You, you had to feel for the guy. He, he was just making one bad mistake after another. You know, the, and, and, and actually, it is because of uh, Vanderbilt. I believe it was Carnoustie. Um, and it was like 15, 20, 15 years ago, something like that. Somebody in the den probably knows. But it was from that uh, total meltdown. Uh, and it was at a time when I was teaching my son to uh, play golf. And, uh, and from that, we developed that. And I'm sure somebody else developed the expression. But it was let your first, in golf, spe specifically in golf, it is let your first mistake be your worst mistake. And all of us golfers, we know that, right? right we, uh, if, well, look, if you're like me, um, you've hit balls from basically everywhere, you know, behind trees, balls stuck in trees, you know, in the whole thing. And, and and the idea is just let that 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 first mistake, wherever it is you are, truly be your worst mistake out there. In any event, that great. Uh, uh, I think it'll probably be on. I would guess at about two or three in the morning. Uh, no time they come on, you know, but they start playing early. So if you're up early like I am, uh, turn that on. In any event, let's get to a couple of questions here. One coming in from Hector, and Hector is asking about Microsoft. And uh, I, Hector, I hadn't, uh, not until you asked about Microsoft, had I looked at their chart recently. What a day today and yesterday, quite frankly, inside of uh, Microsoft. Market top? It's saying, what do you, I don't know what the heck you guys are talking about. But you're asking on the five minute and the 15 minute chart, is there a topping signal for the day? Um, maybe there is. We'll go look at it. But when I look at this daily time frame chart, it's so uber bullish. Uber bullish, weekly chart, uber bullish, monthly chart, uber bullish. Yeah, these profiles are very powerful tools in helping to communicate to you and I, um, is price breaking out, breaking down, or consolidating? Just those three things, just knowing those, one of those three things. And here, uh, price is breaking out. It is above the top of the daily, the top of the weekly, the top of the monthly out here. So uh, this is in full-out breakout mode. Let's try to answer Hector's question to the extent that we can. He was asking for a five-minute and a 15-minute. I've definitely got a 15-minute. And for Hector, we're going to get the five-minute up here. But right now, I want to answer your question specifically. And your question was, is there a TD? Is there, on the five-minute and 15-minute, is there topping for the day? No, I do not have a topping pattern on a 15-minute chart for Microsoft. Um, Price uh, exceeded its TD9 count top. There's there's a new profile. So, yeah, it's consolidating within its profile. 296.96 at the top. 
294.48 at the uh, bottom. It's bearish in structure. Uh, so price would have to close below 295.57 to get all the way down to 294.48. But is that a top? No. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just change the 15-minute to a 5-minute here. The oscillator and change line will stay as a 15-minute oscillator and change line. So we're not going to worry about that at the moment. I want to be able to answer Hector's question. And on a 5-minute basis, the answer is yes. The 5-minute has a road's momentum indicator top. That has simply led to a sideways consolidation. And that consolidation would be between 295.61, not that prices hit that to the T, and 296.96, that's up at the top. That actually is the high. So, yes, on a 15 minute basis, I'm sorry, on a five minute basis, there is a top and there is a consolidation, but no sign of a breakdown, um, which I would think would be your next question out there. Now, as long as we're on Microsoft, the more important question is what's going on in the daily and weekly charts? Well, on the daily time frame chart out here, Yesterday was a bearish reversal candle that confirmed a road's momentum indicator top. However, price never closed below the top of that profile, and therefore its message to us was neutral to bullish. And now today, or at least now as of 147, the message is switched back to all out bullish because price is above yesterday's high. That's the resistance of that bearish separating candle. And as long as price remains above yesterday's high, Hector, this says Microsoft should continue to move higher, today being bar number six, and we know it'd be bar number eight, nine, or 10, so that's not until next week sometime that you could see a topping pattern. On the weekly basis, right now, Microsoft is traded above last week's high. Last week was the bar following bar number nine of a TD9 count. This almost has me rethinking my thought process about taking a short trade, Hector and just looking at this Microsoft chart. Not that one stock is going to make the entire thing out here, but this is in full-out breakout mode. This TD9 count top on a weekly basis didn't even hiccup. And when you see that, that is mucho grande, strong bullish move to the upside. And uh, just bar number eight on a weekly ba on a monthly basis out here. So that could be September, October before it tops. So uh, be careful, uh, Hector. I assume that your questions on the 15 and the five minute were to try to take some type of short trade in Microsoft. And I would uh, I would say the chart patterns are cautioning you against doing that. It's just not in those chart patterns. Let's take a look at uh, Palantir, P-L-T-R, for uh, Terry in the uh, Tiger's Den. And you're in it today. And uh, the battle that you've got going on here, Terry, is at 2536. That is the top of its daily profile. And so in Palantir, if price can close above that, then that would suggest a move up to 27. And $27 is really going to be your number if you're in a long position here. Because as we can see on the weekly basis, price uh, was below that bullish structured profile when it formed. And the bounce up into it is where you would expect a counter trend move to end. And that was at $27 even, Stephen. And then price got back below it. Now it's back inside that profile. Uh, so your real resistance level, so it still may be 27 bucks is it. If you get a close above 27, well then, Terry, what Palantir's weekly chart is communicating would be a move up to 36 bucks. But right now, Palantir, and let me get Palantir going on the other charts, P-L-T-R, uh, just at least so we can look at the daily, weekly, and a 30-minute out here, just to understand if on the daily basis there's some kind of uh, signal that uh, Terry's got to be concerned about. So as we open up this white background chart, what we notice is not really too much to be concerned about, but you do have a couple of battles ahead of you. The one we already discussed, 2536. If price can get above that, it's 2692. It would be a close above 2692 that would then say Palantir is very likely in an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. We're not there yet, but now you know at least on the daily basis where your battles are. And on a weekly basis out here, we've talked about those battles. There's nothing on this chart that shows us anything different. In other words, 27 bucks is going to be a key level of resistance if price can get up there. And on a 30-minute time frame chart, although I don't have any kind of a topping pattern, price is consolidated with inside this profile here. That is between 2486, 2488, and 2594. So hope that helps out with the information you're looking for talent here. Steve Rhodes with TFN.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Two questions in the queue with the uh, two-minute uh, mark here. First one coming in from Eddie. Eddie uh, says, uh, the rally of the VIX seems anemic i think eddie means the retracement uh, is a cavalry week now he's referring to the s p 500 which has rallied 67 points i believe eddie from top to bottom and then and so your standards are very high i consider a 67 point rally uh, where we caught the bottom uh if you're an intraday trader using the roads momentum indicator uh, signals out there in the td9 counts is a uh, that's a good day's work so no i think it's been a strong rally out here in the market. Your question is, do I think the rally continues into the close today? And for that one, I don't have a, uh, the uh, spot volatility is still above the 50-day exponential moving average. That's always dangerous uh, for any type of rally for the ES Mini to try to establish. With regard to uh, signals out here, and let me change chart panels for us. So let's get over to these 30-minute uh, white background charts as we enter the uh, close here. And uh, that, that's a real possibility. And the reason I say that's a possibility, in the ES Mini, it does not look like we're going to get a TD nine count top. So uh, either the rally's over, one possibility. I would, prefer, I would have said that if we definitely had a TD nine count top, but because we don't, I, I can't say that. Um, we don't have a TD nine count top in the NQ. It doesn't mean price doesn't pull back to test the oscillator and change line. In fact, probably the NQ... And John gave us a good hint earlier 
it's probably the one to be watching right now because I see the oscillator and change line went from green or red to green. And so price and that line should test each other. And if it's a test and rejection, eddy, then that would signal that the NQ should rally into the close. So we may have topped out here. It's a, been a great rally off of that bottom, off of that, off of that one day rate of change out there. Um, and with the spot volatilities being above its 50 day, those markets could easily cruise lower in a heartbeat. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Have a terrific Thursday.